Kenya's gold. <laughs> now here comes Thursday giving us a perfect weather for tea. Tea being a leading revenue earner in the country, a commodity found in nearly every home. Sometimes it's consumed on the go and more often than not, it is consumed as a family ritual. Now with those attributes, it's only fair that we take some time to dissect the tea sector and that is what Thursdays are for right here on Kenya's Gold. Now with that, allow me to officially welcome you to the show today, a fantastic show is what we have in store for you. Thank you so very much for joining us. My name is Violeta Ngina. Jina langu ni Emmanuel Terera Sante kwa kukubali kabisa kujunge nasi kandi tama tufike tamati kuna mengi tumekuandalia na bile wasiwasi upo daira sana ndasema kitu kimoja kalamu kitabu andika tuandike sote ili nawe pate kunufaika na ujifunze mengi kutoka kupitia kipindi cha Kenya's Gold papa hapa kuna mengi tumekuandalia lakini sasa tuangazie yale mbae tulizungumzia jana The next frontier and the next millionaires will be coming from the agriculture sector and particularly the uh, poultry sector. Why so? Because if you look at the, the population of our country, we are growing at a rate of 3% per annum. Uh, so this year we are almost at you know, 50 million. Um, the next year or the next five years, the next 10 years, we are projected to hit 60 million uh, Kenyans. What will they eat? Mm -hmm. Where is the meat? Agriculture sector contributes about 30% to uh, our GDP. That means it is so crucial to the Kenya's growth. It is so crucial to attaining the food security and nutrition of the people of Kenya. In terms of the feed, what you require is uh, ensure that you have a balanced meal. Uh, and there are feeds, for example, the ch chick mash uh, for, the, for the chicks, mm -hmm. you have for the growers, you have for the uh, layers, the adults. Uh, what is crucial is to understand the nutrition for each particular uh, chick, uh, for, for each particular group. Before anyone touches on your cow, on your goat, on your chicken, mm -hmm. make sure that that person is registered. And that person is actually certified by the regulator, which is the Kenya Veterinary Board, actually to practice. It is very costly and uh, inhumane that you've done a lot of investment in your farm, then somebody comes and messes up with your, uh, yeah, with, with, yeah, with your investment. <laughs> Uyo bingo alikuwa na nitiririka marifa. Sikiza anasema kitu kimoja, the next frontier mm -hmm. ni ukulima. Tukiendelea kutakuwa na milionea. Na naamini mm -hmm. ndakuwa moja kati ya mm -hmm. milionea taifa. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely did have a great conversation yesterday learning so much on the A to Z of poultry farming and the general animal health. And like you said, mm -hmm. learning that the next frontier of millionaires is mm -hmm. going to be people in the agricultural sector. What can you say? What a time to be a young person. Inafuraisha. Absolutely. Yomdogo, basi ni nafasi kwako, mm -hmm. utambe na utambarize. There you yeah. go. However, for now, let us switch gears to the focus of the day being the tea sector. And I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered how the tea gets to the market? Now, our gold feature, which is coming right up, will answer that and a lot more. Take a look. <music> Another day, another fantastic opportunity for us to understand a lot more on what happens in detail in the tea sector. Now, we took you to the farm where you got to understand how we plant and take care of our tea. And also went to the factory where we learned so much about the processing of our tea. Now, have you ever thought about how our tea gets to the market? We are going to be getting right inside here where we'll be talking to an expert but who will shed more light on the process that happens right here at the KTDA offices. Come along with me, let's get into the process together. Hello. How are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. Now, as we get into the conversation of what happens to the tea from the factories, in the same way, as a at how many factories are under KTDA. KTDA ni agency ambayo inasimamia ukulima wa majani chai ya wakulima wadogo wadogo. Ukulima wadogo tunamaanisha yule mkulima ambaye ako na kuota, eka, 
pengine eka mbili e, namna hiyo ya chai na tuko na wakulima zaidi ya um, 1660 na sitini karibia 1700 kaunti 16 za Kenya factory zetu zote tuko na factory sabini na moja yeah what you are seeing here are names of the factories we have 70 of them are doing city cities out of the 70 we have 10 that are doing what we call specialty and orthodox teas and then we have one that is doing only orthodox not ctc it's called matuno uh -huh. so when the factory packs the tea they are processed and packed them into the lots or batches that you saw in the factory the teas are consigned to the warehouses in mombasa majority of our tea is exported from the warehouse then we get a sample of tea what the, the sizes that you're seeing here they are representing each each pack is representing a, a, a batch of tea that was packed in the factory so we will get this sample here the factory will keep a similar sample a copy of the same and the tea broker will also get a copy of the same but also there will be another bigger sample of 4 kilograms that will also go to the warehouse alongside the, the main batch of the tea so when we receive this uh, sample here our our role is to test we do what we call organolytic analysis of the tea what we are calling testing is that the same as what we know as slapping yes right. slapping <laughs> atomizing uh -huh. cupping mm -hmm. you know all that all those terms are used to describe this process of testing mm -hmm. and we test uh, with a view to advise factories if there are any manufacture faults that they need to uh, address in their manufacturing process areas of strength that they need to maintain on and then after that we will give these samples to buyers for city cities which is our main production we are looking for in the in what we call we have descriptions for for tea we have the leaf we have the infusion and we have the cup or the liquor what you drink the leaf is the black stuff the, the the tea leaves that you buy then we have the infusion the infusion is what you sieve off which you normally throw away and then we have the liquor which is now what you take so when we are looking at the leaf it is generally accepted that the blacker the tea is the better the uniformity of the particles the better the, the uh, absence of other materials other than that particular grade of tea so we shall be talking of uh, what we call stocks uh, tea stocks tea stocks will be coming from poor leaf poorly plucked leaf so it's supposed to be extracted out so that you don't see mix of colors in that tea so uniformity of color uniformity of size what we call the texture uh, in terms of the size of the grade and the uniformity of that grade so on the leaf those are now the aspirations of a good tea when you come to the infusion the infusion is supposed to show you the controls that were put in place during the manufacture process so the infusion is supposed to be bright for city cities it is coppery bright then you come now to the real stuff the liquor the liquor itself. because this is now what we consume mm -hmm. what we are looking at is the color it's supposed to be bright we are looking at the thickness of the cup the thicker it is the better and we are looking now that is what visual then when you are testing you are looking for strength you are looking for something we call briskness briskness that appealing taste you know you taste a cup of tea and you say wow that's it's so refreshing you are describing that aspect of briskness and the strength of that cup of tea and the flavor of course mm -hmm. yeah those are the key things we look at so let me start with the city seat tea because that's what i've just described let's do this factory called michimikuru michimikuru is a factory in uh, meru county they are the actually doing ctc and orthodox right right so here we have a series of samples from michimikuru each representing a batch of tea like now this one this is batch number 962 that was packed on 16th of november it is a bp1 grade bp1 is one of the grades of tea it has 40 paper sacks 40 bags 
of okay. tea, the way you saw them stacked in the factories in a pallet. Mm. And the gross weight is 2.5 tons. Mm. The net weight is 2.484 tons. Mm. This four is a four kilogram sample I was talking about. Mm. The cell lab weight is actually 2480. Mm. Uh, the moisture content is at 3.2 percent, and the density is at 232, mm -hmm. and it was prepared by this gentleman called P. Mwiti in the factory, mm -hmm. and it was checked by the signature in the factory. Okay. I assume this is probably the packing supervisor mm -hmm. in the factory or the production manager, mm -hmm. all right? Okay. So it has all the details there. Mm -hmm. So here we have what we are calling the leaf. So when you look at uh, this grade called BP1, mm -hmm. there is normally the accepted size of BP1, the normal size of BP1. And actually they are, in, um, it is, they are measured in sizes of the, the micrometer size of, of the particle. But of course we don't go to the pains of measuring and all that. Over time we know the size of a BP1. Mm -hmm. So we look at the size, number one. We look at the color. The, as I mentioned, the blacker it is, the better. Mm -hmm. Then number three, we look at the freedom from, like now you can see a piece of fiber here. Yes. Yeah. So this factory most likely will be told you have fiber in your tea that you need to eliminate. Yeah. Okay. All, right? All right. So we look at that. Then we look at presence of other particle sizes that are not the size of BP1. Mm -hmm. You can see, for instance, here. Oh, there's a slightly bigger... A slightly bigger particle. Yes. So you'll be saying uh, there's a bit of irregularity okay. in that grid. Uh -huh. But otherwise, it's a generally accepted size of BP1. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. Now, if you place several BP1s here uh -huh. from different factories, uh -huh. then again you'll be able to see the differences in quality. And those differences in quality will also determine the price that the factory fetches. Okay. Based on the leaf appearance. Uh -huh. The other key thing we look at is something we call mixing. Mixing is presence of other uh, particle sizes, other than like the ones we talked about, the large ones, mm -hmm. or dust, uh, dust material. Mm -hmm. It's tea, but dust material, which we shall see it ahead somewhere. Mm -hmm. So it's supposed to be neat, a neat grade, not mixed with anything else. Mm -hmm. So when you hear we are testing and we are talking of mixed, we are saying that there is presence of other size, other than the one we are looking at. Mm -hmm. So the way we look for mixing is do that. And if it was mixed, you'll be able to see smaller particles at the top here. Mm -hmm. The other ways, you can just shake it. Mm -hmm. So this is OK? Yeah, this one is OK. Once we have done that, we come to the infusion. And we are looking at the uniformity of this. Mm -hmm. The color, how, how, how uniform is it? So it describes how well the tea is fermented. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the color, and the brighter the, 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 brighter the copper color, the better. All right. Okay. And the well uniformity, the, mm -hmm. the better mm -hmm. it is if it is uniform. Then we come to the cup. So this is now where we look at the brightness mm -hmm. of the cup. Mm -hmm. How bright is it? Mm -hmm. The brighter it is, the better. Mm -hmm. How thick it is? The thicker it is, the better. Mm -hmm. How we talk of depth. Depth is a combination of color and thickness. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the depth of the cup. The, the, and we talk of the, this character, creaming character, where when you do this, you see the, like there's a residue. Mm -hmm. And the residue that will be remaining mm -hmm. It's actually an indication of thickness. All right. Those are visual. Mm -hmm. Then you go now to the actual testing. Yes. Slapping. The slapping. Now, before we even slap, what makes a good tester? To be a good tester, of course, you must be able to discern the different attributes of taste, the flavor, and the different tastes that are there. Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to do that, you must have some had some experience in a, a manufacturing facility or in a facility like this, at least not less than three years uh, of daily testing of tea. Mm -hmm. So can we test? Yes. All right. You need a few implements. Uh, you need a spittoon. We need uh, a goblet. We call it a goblet mm -hmm. for testing. And you need a spoon. Mm -hmm. uh, all these are for hygiene reasons. So we, a long time ago, we used just to test with a spoon. Mm -hmm. Then uh, issues of health came in, COVID came in, and we had to. Uh, improve or not this. So what we do is you just fetch the liquor, mm -hmm. drop it there, 
and then now mm -hmm. you do the slapping and atomizing. Mm -hmm. So I do this. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I suck it in mm -hmm. to spray the liquor to all the parts of my mouth so that a different, the different parts of the tongue discern different tastes and also on the cheeks and the back of the mouth and I'm trying also to get the smell, the flavor, the aroma, right. what is it. So by spraying it like that you expose it to all the senses of the mouth. Then I roll it around so that I, I fully get that. I'll be making remarks as I taste, right. and somebody will be recording that. This is our scoring table. We call it the Camellia uh, table. Mm -hmm. Camellia from the Camellia sinensis 40. We have the category um, of, of what we are looking at. Mm -hmm. We have the scores. This is in summary. And we actually come down now to what I was describing. The leaf texture, the cut, and the infusion texture whether there is stock or fiber, then these cores will be fed into our system. Okay. So that over time, we can be able to uh, trend this factory in terms of quality. Right. So we can go to the system and now come up with a trend of quality for this factory by invoice number or for a period of time. Yeah. All right. Mm. And then once all of that is done, is that the process? Is that it? Or is there anything else so that after, you need to do After we have advised the factories now, we will again do samples for buyers. We send some, uh, samples to buyers. Mm -hmm. ba buyers also are interested in trending the performance of the factory. How is the factory progressing in terms of quality? Mm -hmm. For instance, we shall pick factories that we are saying are improving. So we want to show the buyers that indeed it was not a one-off. It's a consistent improvement or they have remained at that quality level for some time. Because buyers are very keen on uh, what we call consistency of quality. Whether the quality is high or low or whatever, they want it consistent because they are putting this tea into a blend for a certain brand. So they don't want it changing every day. All right. And when you talk about buyers, you're here talking about both international market and local markets. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Correct. Now for the... When you're doing the corrections, of course, mm -hmm. meaning there was a problem noted somewhere. Yeah. Just to advise us so we can improve on the quality, is it usually a problem from the farmer side or the factory side or it can be from both ends? It could be from both ends, but we are able to tell. For instance, when we see fi the fiber, the cut tips we were talking about, the fiber content, mm -hmm. it means the quality of plucking of that leaf is not good. So our minimum quality is 75% good leaf, two leaves and a band. If you see a lot of stock, it could mean that the plucking standard is lower than 75. So the farmers need to improve on the plucking standard. So they need to pluck more of the two leaves and a band and leave the stocks and other leaves that will give the stocks. Uh, if, if it is uh, the flakiness we saw in the leaf, that is the factory side. And it can also tell you probably in what stage that problem arose. More often than not, the withering was not done properly, so the cutting, tearing, and culling did not happen properly. So they need to improve on with us, but that will be again supported by the taste in the liquors. So you can be able to tell whether the problem is the wither because of the way it tasted and even how the infusion looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how often do you receive samples? Every day we are receiving samples from different factories. When we are exporting 90%, actually 95% of our tea and consuming only 5%. So if anything were to happen now in the international market, as it does happen every once in a while, we suffer that. Uh, but if we were consuming our tea, then it doesn't matter what happens out there. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the case of countries like India. They produce quite a a high amount of tea, but they consume a lot of it, so they export very little. So they will not be affected much in terms of income by what is happening in the globe. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, as KTDA and the government, are you making plans to just make sure we create more awareness on our teas locally so that we can increase our local consumption, as you say? Yes. Uh, what we do is uh, we liaise very closely with government agencies like the Tea Board of Kenya, who is the premier marketer of Kenya tea. We liaise very closely with the Ministry of Trade and uh, Foreign Affairs and the embassies 
the Kenyan embassies, especially in, the, in our key destination markets, we are always in, in touch trying to identify opportunities, uh, identify where there are challenges and ways of uh, overcoming that. Two ones improving the local consumption. One of the things we have requested government to do is see if they can uh, have what we call a common user facility where business people go there and do a value addition without having to invest into the capital of machinery and other stuff. What can you tell the young person back at home? For our youths, I think if you look at the trends in the world today, uh, probably agriculture is the only area that will remain sustainable. The increasing world population for our economy Kenya, which we are saying the backbone is agriculture, then we need to get in there and do modern agriculture, especially today. And the tea is actually a crop to look at. I think in the economy of Kenya, tea is, if it is not, I think it's now the best foreign income earner for the economy. And therefore, and the opportunities are there because um, there's a huge demand for tea, good quality tea out in the market. And we have a good environment and the, our weather favors good growth of tea. Thank you so much, Vincent. It's been an absolute pleasure being right here at KTD offices and understanding what happens to our tea once it leaves the factory and the samples that are brought here and what you do with the samples. And that is the way to go. And I hope you, our viewers back at home, you have managed to learn exactly what happens right here at KTD offices with the tea. To our young people back at home, tea is gold. So why don't you get yourself in into the space of agriculture. That's all we had for you right now in our gold feature. Keep watching Kenya's Gold because we do have a lot more on all matters agriculture.